I'm Joey Mantia, going to do two race breakdowns of my two world titles back in 2010 in Guarne, Colombia, the 500 meter and the 1000 meter on the track. The idea behind this is to shed light on what was done well, what wasn't done well, call out mistakes that people made that ultimately gave me the opportunity to win these races, talk about what they could have done differently, and moving forward, if you guys like these, I can do other skaters as well. I don't have to do just my videos, but I have these readily available to me, so we're going to start here. I'm going to start with the 500 meter and just watch it through normal speed the first time, and I'll talk you through it, and then we'll go back, pause it, talk about different aspects of the race, and talk about the different strategies that were employed for me to be able to win these races. So getting right into it, we'll start with the 500 meter. All right, 500 meters on the track, let's go. Gun goes off, I win the start, my teammate ends up second, this is textbook. My biggest rival in third place is Andres Munoz. There's two things I know in this race. One, I am not the fastest guy on the track. Two, Andres Munoz is the designated winner because Colombians always have one and he was their guy. And I knew that all I needed to do was roll into the corners and run out as hard as I possibly could. And even if I wasn't on the top of my game, they were not gonna have enough speed or time to get around me in the straightaways. And that was pretty much the strategy from the get-go. I win the start, keep everything behind me. It's unfortunate that my teammate got pushed back into fourth, but uh, opened up a passing lane on the first lap, and uh, the rest is history. You just can't make any mistakes like that in a 500. There's no time. But in terms of 500 meters at a world championships on a flat track, the race is always for first. The second the gun goes off, no matter where you are, you are trying to get into first, and you do not have time to mess around. You cannot sit. All right, let's watch that one more time. We're going to pause here and talk about the false start penalties or lack thereof in 2010. Back then, you could jump as many times as you want and you're not getting penalized. They're going to call you back, they get mad at you, but you're not getting disqualified for a false start. Nowadays, it's a completely different story, but the strategy back then, as I mentioned before, I was not the fastest guy on the track. I am going to do everything in my power to be first off that line. If Andres Munoz beats me to that first corner, I am not winning this world title. And so I put everything into jumping and to nailing this again and again and again. And finally, either the refs got sick of us jumping and let it go, or I nailed it right on the money. All right, boom, mistake number one. Andres Munoz from Colombia ends up third off the start instead of first where he should have been. He had pole position. He's a good starter. He just got caught sleeping. The reality is it happens. It's a mistake. Probably happened from all the false starts that, that came before it. But that mistake essentially handed me a world title because now we are one and two. My teammate's behind me. He's not going to pass me. He's going to give me space. The only mistake he makes is leaving this passing lane open here. Now, I'm doing what's called roll in run out. That's when you roll into the corner and you come out of the out of the turn as fast as you possibly can. And the fastest part of your race is that exit. When you get halfway down the straightaway, you start slowing down to start creating a little bit of tension in the pack. And hopefully people run into you and you just repeat that again and again and again. Now, you're going to see the Colombian take advantage of that, that passing lane being open from that strategy. He doesn't get all the way by, but my teammate chooses not to make contact. It essentially ruins his momentum and he ends up fourth. And that's the reason we didn't go one and two or at worst one and three in this race. And that happens. These are the mistakes we're looking to try to prevent by these kind of videos talking about them. The rest of the race, I just keep employing the same strategy, roll and run out, and it ends up handing me a world title. And the reality is with a 500 meter on a flat track, there's almost no opportunity to make mistakes. The second you do, you're in trouble. All right, let's talk hypotheticals. If Andres Munoz wins the start there, he wins the race. He's world champion, hands down. Because we're on a flat bank track, there's just no possible way I'm going to be able to get around him unless he makes a big mistake like my teammate did and leaves a door open and I can hop into it, it's just not gonna happen. Now racing on a flat track versus a parabolic track, if you are trying to control the pack and you're on a parabolic, it's very, very difficult. There's always a passing lane. And chances are on a 500 meter like this on a parabolic track, the lead would have changed three or four times. And I wouldn't have been able to use the strategy of roll in and run out, it just wouldn't have worked. I would have had to have relied on my race sense and just reacting to the to what people are doing in the race a little bit more than having a cut and dry I'm going to win the start and I'm not going to look back and I'm not going to let anybody around me type strategy and you'll see that also in the thousand meter as we move forward that I was able to get to the front and I was not the fastest guy in the race I wasn't the fastest guy at this world championships by any means but I was able to get to the front when I needed to and use aggressive movements to get there and then control the race from there because once you get to a certain speed there's just nowhere to pass. The strategy for the 1,000 is pretty much the same as the 500. I want to be in the front controlling this race, and I know I need to get there as soon as possible. On a flat track, when the speeds pick up, there's nowhere to pass. So first straight away, I try to make a move there on the outside. Unsuccessful. Munoz does a great job accelerating, keeping me behind him. He's getting a good tight line. I settle back in, look for another opportunity to pass. When I do that, I fall asleep a little bit. His teammate moves from third to first. I don't have any time to react, and if I did, I wouldn't want to anyways. His name is Jorge Cifuentes. He's an aggressive skater. I don't want to fight against a guy who's not going to back down to me. So I just settle in, let everything happen. Munoz ends up back in front now. He's controlling the race. I know I'm starting to get into trouble. I need to make a move 
and make an aggressive one as soon as possible. So I use 100% of my energy to try to get to the front. I don't make it, but that that burst and that reaction leaves me a gap to go into second. I do the same exact thing here on the back stretch. I don't make it by. I'm skating on the outside of his right shoulder that entire turn and down the straightaway. I finally get by him right before the turn because I don't let up. Essentially, that was my field sprint, and that is the reason I won this race, because once I get to the front, I'm employing the roll-in run-out method, and I'm not going to let anybody buy me, especially as we get into one lap to go. The speeds are just too high, and I'm going to skate too tight of a line, as you can see here. If they want to pass me, they have to go so far on the outside, they risk getting stuck going into the turn entry, and when you get stuck on somebody's right shoulder on the, on the turn, then usually it doesn't end up well. You're going to just lose a few positions, so people would rather stay tight in the turn and look for an opportunity to make a pass on a mistake than to make an aggressive move on the outside on a flat bank when we're going that fast. And we're gonna watch that back one more time. I'm gonna pause, talk about what was going on behind me a little bit more and the reasons that I think I won and what I think Columbia could have done differently to prevent me from winning that race. Now I want you to pay attention to what's going on behind me and more specifically, I want you to watch Bart Swings who ends up fifth here off the line. He's a phenomenal athlete from Belgium. He has a bucket full of world titles and this is his second year senior. He's one of the few athletes to be able to come in as a first year senior and win a world title, which is wildly impressive. So he has the ability here to win this race and he has incredible turn speed, probably some of the best turns our sport has ever seen. And what he does well here is he takes advantage of this opening. The Italian behind me is also a younger skater. He's only paying attention to my line. He's not watching or worrying about what's going on behind him. So he floats out with me because I'm trying to set up a pass. Bart sees that, takes advantage of it like he should, but doesn't commit to the, to the pass all the way, doesn't get aggressive and use his hands to make space for himself to get back in the pack. And the Italian ends up weaseling his way back in and gaining the position back. And now Bart is going backwards, has to regain momentum. He's essentially doing a corner blast every single turn to try to regain his momentum and then runs into the back of somebody because he has too much speed and nowhere to go. And you're going to see that again. I'm going to pause it on a specific example on the next lap where he comes in tight and runs right into the back of Cifuentes. And I mentioned in the 500 after that video that when you do the roll in and run out method, you're trying to create tension in the pack. And that's exactly what happened here. As I come down the straightaway, I start slowing the speed down. The Colombians have nowhere to go. They have to stop skating. Bart has too much speed, runs into the back of Cifuentes there, transfers that speed, even though it's a light tap, kind of ruins his momentum. You can see he has to float out there, has nowhere to go. And it really, it's unfortunate because he's one of the faster guys in the race, but just doesn't have any place to go. And that also sucks about flat track racing. And if it was parabolic, he probably would have been able to make it all the way to the front at some point. And um, that's just the reality of racing. With flat track racing, there's one line. You have to be very careful not to create too much speed with nowhere to go. And luckily, when I made that pass from third into second, it created a little gap. So I had somewhere to go and I was able to very lightly control my speed on Munoz, who also has incredible acceleration and didn't make me actually push him like a, a jam type situation. So looking back, you want to be careful how you control your speed. That's the lesson to take away from the second time through. And make sure that you have a strategy of where you're going to go and employing it. Don't get overzealous about trying to get into a position immediately and get yourself into trouble. Now, there's two mistakes I think Columbia made that could have prevented me from winning this race if they didn't do them. The first is once they ended up one and two on the track, the domestic Horace of Fuentes just let me pass into second. He didn't leave a gap. He didn't accelerate. He didn't react strong enough for me to be stuck on the outside and have nowhere to go, which is what should have happened. Secondly, Andres Munoz, who's controlling the race, is not carrying enough speed down the straightaway. So it gave me an opportunity to throw a crazy pass like that out of nowhere with just a little bit of acceleration and successfully go from second and then carry my speed from second into first. And when you do the roll in run out method, you have to roll into the corner, you're trying to create a jam, and then you skate out as aggressive as you possibly can, and you have to carry some kind of speed down the straightaway. You can't just shut it down halfway. It's not a points race where you can just snake and control the pack by just stopping. You still have to skate a little bit to maintain your speed so somebody can't do something crazy like that. And thinking back, I mentioned you don't, you don't want to get too overzealous with your passes, and that might be a little bit confusing when I talked about the uh, 1,000 and you want to just make every aggressive move towards the front. The idea is that you create speed and you have somewhere to go with it. What you don't want to do is be overzealous in the sense of creating all this speed and just running into the back of somebody. It's better to set up on their outside shoulder or go somewhere else as opposed to just transferring all your momentum into somebody. You want to learn how to be an absolute leech. And that means anybody creating momentum for you from behind by pushing you or you creating your own speed, you don't want to transfer any of that into the guy in front of you. 
If you can do that without losing your positioning, that is it. That is 100% the takeaway from the second time through, and that's what you want to be aiming for. It doesn't matter if you're skating indoor, track, road, marathons. You want to take on all the speed you can without transferring that forward, unless it's your teammate, of course. Well, that's going to do it for today's race breakdown. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.